So you're gonna get the main color yarn and then just drape it over on itself to form a loop. Put your crochet hook through the loop. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. Just yarn over. Turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Now we're going to make a chain of nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now I have a chain of nine. You're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And then you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across, which will give you a stitch count of eight. And then after you make your single crochet into the last stitch, you're going to make a chain of one. So chain one, turn your work. Now this will count as the second row. So one single crochet into the next stitch and then one single crochet into every stitch across to complete the second row, not counting the chain, first chain, starting chain. And you're still going to have a stitch count of eight. So you want to make sure that you have your stitch count of eight. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then you're going to chain one for the third row and you're going to keep repeating this, maintaining your stitch count of eight until you've completed 22 rows total. So 22 rows total. This is our third row. And I'm maintaining my stitch count of eight. Then I'm going to chain one, turn the work, and repeat until I have a total of 22 rows. Then after you finish your 22 rows, you can see how I have a straight edge on both sides. Then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the edges. So I fold mine up about two, four, six, eight rows up. So enough to sew this edge closed. And then just cut the yarn. So again, I fold it up about eight to make a little bit of a square. And then I'm going to get my tapestry needle for sewing. Then you're just going to take and sew the edge. You want to leave one side open. So just sew this edge on the side and this edge here and then leave this side open because we need to put the stuffing in there. It's a little bit of craft stuffing. Then just take and put some craft stuffing in there, enough to make a little pillow. Then you're going to take and place the little pillow on the bottom of the tail. So line it up. Here's the tail. You want to line the pillow portion with the tail. And then this other portion will go up the tail and then you'll sew it in place. So now I'm going to finish sewing the edge to the tail and also closing that pillow portion or you can just take and close the pillow portion first, which is what I'm going to do, and then sew it to the squirrel's tail on the bottom. So then you can see how I just sewed, I went through the tail first and then up through the pillow portion, just makes it a little bit easier for sewing it in place. And then you just take and you just sew it down 
onto the edge of the tail. Then, when your squirrel sits, you have no problems. This, this really helps back here. And you can cover it with fur if you want to. And it just really helps the squirrel to sit without any difficulties. So now we're going to make the ears. We're going to start with the magic circle. And start with the slip knot. But this time, we're only going to make three single crochet into the magic circle. So only three instead of our regularly making six. So only three single crochet into the magic circle instead of six. Then you're going to take and close it gently. Don't pull it too tight because then it'll be hard for you to get into the stitches. Then you're going to turn your work just like you would with the six stitches, but now we only have three. And then you're going to make two single crochet into each stitch, and that will give you a total of six stitches in the round. So two single crochet into each stitch, giving you a total of six stitches in the round. So I just finished two, three, four, five, and six. Now you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for two rounds. So I usually just count. So here's one. Make sure you're getting under both loops for the stitch. Here's two single crochet. Three single crochet. four, five, and six. So that's one round. Now we need one more round of one single crochet in every stitch around. So here's one. Here's two. three, four, five, and six. So now you're going to place two single crochet into every stitch around and that's going to give you a total stitch count of 12. So two single crochet into each stitch. That's two, three, four. So two single crochet each stitch, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then two more for, for a total of twelve stitches in the round. And then at this point is where I turn the ear inside out. So leave a little bit of a loop where you left off and then it takes a little bit of maneuvering to get the work inside out. You just kind of push the tip through 
and then your work is inside out. And eventually we're going to be tucking the loose yarn end into the center. So for now, you're going to go back to where you left off. Whoop! Don't lose your loop, which I, I lost my loop, so I'm going to redo that stitch. So now, we're going to go ahead and get our loose yarn end, or your yarn marker, and place it right where you left off. And now you want one single crochet into every stitch around for three rounds. So one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds, and then come back. After you finish your three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, you can go ahead and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. And then go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the ear onto the project. Whether it's a squirrel or a skunk, you can go ahead and remove the yarn marker. And then I just tuck the loose yarn end into the center of the ear and then I'm not going to stuff the ear. So you need two of these. So now I have the ears. I'm going to show you how to make the decoration on the front of the ear if you want that. This is how much I have left over of the third skein of yarn. So you have you need three skeins to complete one squirrel with this color. For Chip the squirrel I didn't put any decoration on his ears. So if you like that look instead, you don't need to follow along with this decorative portion that I'm going to show you. This is what it looks like on the skunk. So if you want to make that portion that goes on the ear, just get the same colored yarn that you used for the face and the belly. And in my case it's the fleece colored yarn. Go ahead and fold it over on itself to form a loop and then you're going to make your slip knot and then we're just going to make a chain of five one two three four five then you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook and then one single crochet in every stitch back across and then that will give you a stitch count of four. And then you're just going to turn your work. So no chain. Turn your work. Go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet. So that's one. Next stitch for a single crochet for two. And then one single crochet into the last stitch for three. Then you're just going to turn your work, go into the next stitch over for one single crochet, and then the next stitch for one single crochet. For a stitch count of two, turn your work, and then slip stitch into the next stitch. So just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch. Then go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the little piece onto the ear. So you're going to need two of these. And then you just take, and I usually have where I finished off on the larger port ear towards the back. So I sew the little piece of color or decoration on the ear. And I just take the small loose yarn end and put that onto a tap the tapestry needle first. Kind of center where you want to have the decoration for the ear. And then you just take and bring the loose yarn end towards the center of the ear at the bottom. And then you're going to take the long end that you left for sewing, put that onto your tapestry needle, center the decoration again, Make sure it's not crooked, and then you just sew it in place. Make sure you don't stab yourself with the tapestry needle. 
and then you just kind of sew it to the front of the ear only so don't go back through to the back of the ear and then I just brought the loose yarn end towards where I had the other loose yarn end and then I just tie a knot and then I use any excess yarn that I have for stuffing for inside the ear so I just kind of push it inside the ear and then you just repeat the same process with the other ear now to sew the ears on I just took my tapestry needle make sure all the loose yarn ends are tucked in and then you're going to take and use the top of the head that magic circle as a guide and I go out to the side three count out three row, rounds one two three and then I'm gonna line it up an imaginary line from the center of the magic circle so one two three and then that's where my ear is going to go so I'm gonna kind of line up the ear so I want the front so here I have it you just kind of line it up about three rows out let me bring this into view for you and then position the ear where you want it make sure you have it where you want it once you decide where you want the ear the opposite side for the other ear needs to be in the same location so you want them to be symmetrical you don't want them to be crooked and then you just go in and then you can come out on the other side I'm trying to get this under the camera for you and then just bring the tapestry needle through and position the ear make sure you have it where you want before you start sewing it in place and then you just go around the base of the ear I usually sew the front of the ear first and then I go around and sew the back of the ear and tie the knot on the back of the ear so here you can see how I'm just going in and out and just sewing the ear in place with my tapestry needle then once you have the ear sewn on securely I go towards the back of the ear and that's where I tie my knot I usually go through twice and then I go right where I tied the knot and up into the ear pull that knot so you can't see it and then I usually go back into the ear and back down and then just trim the loose yarn end and then that buries it nicely and makes it hard for the loose yarn end to come undone and then you just sew the opposite side the ear on the same way another option that you can do is put hair on top of the head so here you can see on the skunk I put a little bit of the black fur and then the white fur on top so on the girl squirrel I'm just putting a little bit of fur on the top of her head and I just used the same method that I did for the tail and I just take and between the ears I just loop the yarn so the same way that I did with the tail and then I just check the length because I don't want it to cover her eyes and this is what it looks like after I looped a little bit of hair on hers and you can just kind of push it to the side if you want now I'm going to show you how to make the bow tie if you like the bow tie that Chip has except I'm going to show you the colors that I used for Chip the squirrel but I used a different color for the skunk for the female squirrel I put a crochet double cherry blossom for the flower in her hair. I have a separate video tutorial for that. And then for her necklace, this is actually a bracelet. 
So it's removable and you can wear it as a bracelet. You can see how it fits her perfectly around the neck and it is removable. And then you could put whatever charm that you want on it. I chose Rebel. And then you can unclip the charm and change out the saying on the charm. These are really nice. And I got this from Hobby Lobby. The yarn that I used for Chip's bow tie is, I love this yarn, neon color. This is blue neon. And then I used my Red Heart Sparkle Blue color for the bow tie. For the skunk, I have his little sunglasses that fit perfectly. You can see how I have them up above the eyes, but they also will come down and sit on his nose too. So for the skunk's bow tie, I'm going to show you how to make the same bow tie, but I'm going to make his all red but you can change the colors if you want to. This is how I made use the colors for Chip. So you can see that I used a lot the neon blue for the the portion that goes around the neck and the center of the bow tie. So I'm going to show you each piece, but I'm going to be using the Red Heart Sparkle Red. I used my 3.75 millimeter crochet hook and you just need a pair of scissors and your tapestry needle. So the first thing that you want to do, we're going to make the ring that goes around the neck. First thing is um, get the color that you want for the portion that goes around the neck. Fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop. Then take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. And then go ahead and cinch that knot down and then the loop around the crochet hook. And now you're going to make a chain. I'm just going to show four of them on video tutorial. One, two, three, four. So now you're going to continue making a chain for the size that you want for around the neck. When you come back I'll show you what size I used. So for mine I made a chain of 25 and this will fit around my skunk's neck. Then you're just going to make a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. So one, two, three, four. The fourth chain from the hook, yarn over, go into the fourth chain from the hook, bring up a loop, complete your double crochet, and then just make one double crochet into every stitch back across. So only one double crochet in every stitch back across and then come back. So I have 23 total double crochet when I finished mine. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the ends together and to help sew the bow in place. Now we're going to make the bow. For the bow, you're going to start it the same way. You're going to fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop. And then you're going to make your slip knot. Then we're going to make a chain. And this time we're going to make a chain of nine. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook and then just make one single crochet into each stitch back across. Then you're going to make a chain of two, one, two, turn your work. That counts as your first half double crochet for the next row. And we're going to make one half double crochet into every stitch back across. You just yarn over, go into the next stitch over, 
and then make your half double crochet just yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through all three loops for a half double crochet so you yarn over go into the next stitch over bring up a loop three loops on the hook yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a half double crochet and you're going to make one half double crochet into every stitch back across so you should have eight total half double crochet for that row then you're going to move up to the next row so you chain two turn your work and then you just make one half double crochet into each stitch back across and you should still have the same number of half double crochet when you finish the row so eight total stitches for this row and you're going to keep repeating this until you have the length that you need for your bow so when you come back I'll give you the length and how many rows that I made for my bow. So I made mine approximately 22 rows of half double crochet. You can see how I have the straight edges on both sides. And for Chips I made his approximately six and a half inches long. So if you measure it lengthwise about six and a half inches long. For this one I measured it about seven inches long. Then once you have the size that you want, go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and then pull enough yarn through to sew the edges together. So then you just take and with find out which side you want showing for the right side and then the wrong side you're going to fold together. So the wrong side is on the ins actually the right side is on the inside. Sorry about that. So you want the right sides together and then the wrong side is facing you because when you sew the two edges together on the wrong side you're going to get a ridge and then you're just going to turn it inside out so go ahead and fold the right sides together and then you're going to take your tapestry needle put it on the long end that you left for sewing and then you're just going to take and sew the two edges together and again the wrong side is facing me with this red heart sparkle red both sides look good so either side would work but some yarns you can tell the difference with the right side and the wrong side so if you're using a different yarn you want to make sure that you're you have the right side facing you as you sew the two ends together and it will create a ridge on the wrong side. So I'm going to sew it together and then I'm going to go right back across so I can tie a knot and then bury my loose yarn end. So I'm going right back to where my other loose yarn end is and then I'm just going to tie a knot Then you just take the tapestry needle and you want to bury the loose yarn end. So I just take on the wrong side and I just kind of weave the loose yarn end through on the wrong side. And then you can take and just trim the loose yarn ends. So now we have two pieces for the bow. This is the portion that goes around the neck. And then now we have the bow portion. Go ahead and turn it inside out. You can see how you have a nice edge. But this is going to go towards the back of the bow. This little portion here on the right side. And this is the front of the bow. So make sure that the part that we sewed is in the middle of the back of the bow. And now I'm going to show you how to make the centerpiece, so go ahead and set this aside for now. So now you're going to get whatever color yarn you want for the center of the bow, and you're going to take and fold it over on itself just like we did before. We're going to start with our slip knot, 
So just yarn over and go through the center of the loop for your slip knot. And then you're going to make a chain of four. Actually, chain of six. I'm so used to doing the four to show the chain on video tutorial. So I have a chain of two, chain three, chain four, chain five, and chain six. So I have a chain of six. Now we're going to make a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. So count back four stitches, yarn over, go into that fourth chain from the hook, and then bring up a loop and make a double crochet, yarn over, go through two loops, two loops remaining, yarn over, and then go through the two remaining loops for a double crochet. And then you're going to make one double crochet into each stitch back across, which will give you a total of four stitches or four double crochet for this first row, not counting that starting chain. Then you're going to chain three, one, two, three, turn your work, and then make a double crochet into the next stitch over. You're going to maintain the stitch count at four, so you should have four double crochet after completing this row. Then you're going to chain three again, and you're going to repeat this for two more rows, so that then you'll have a total of four rows. So here's one, two, we're on our third one, and then you're going to make one more for a total of four rows of double crochet, and then come back. Then you're going to go ahead, after you finish your four rows, go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the edges together around the bow. So now you're going to get your bow, and I have my bow centerpiece here, where this is where I sewed the bow. That's going to be towards the back of the bow and you can see how I centered that back portion halfway through. Go ahead and set that down. Then you're going to get the center piece that's going to go in the middle of the bow. Go ahead and get your tapestry needle with the long end that you left for sewing. And then you're just going to take and pinch the middle or center of the bow. And then you're going to take and wrap that center piece around and then you're going to take and sew the two edges together on the back of the bow. Then you can take and tie a knot on the back of the bow. And then just turn the bow over. Make sure that you center the middle strip in the center of the bow. You can shape your bow. Then it's ready to sew onto the ring that goes around the neck. But first, what you're going to do is sew, set this aside, and then you're going to sew the ring around the neck of the squirrel or skunk. Make sure that you have the right side showing the way you want. I'm going to use this as my right side. And then the portion that you sew together is going to be in the front of the squirrel. So this portion that you sew together will be in the front of the squirrel. So here you can see how I have it around the neck. And again, I'm making this one for my skunk, but I made the squirrel the same way. And I'm just going to take and sew, make sure it's not twisted. I have the right side showing. And then I just sew the two ends together. Then I'm ready to sew the bow in place. 
So I'm not sewing the bow to the skunk. I'm only sewing the bow to the ring that I just placed around the neck. So I'm just going to take and sew it in place. And then, after I sew it in place, I'm just going to bury the loose yarn ends in the back of the bow. And then I have a cute little bow on the skunk and or for the squirrel.